What's up, you beautiful collectors and action figure fans? It's the one and only off the bottom is coming to you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Titans Return Deluxe Class Scorch Fire in Windblade. For the package, very standard with a lot of these. You've got that nice card on the back with the Transformers text and Generation logo. Windblade really does seem to be getting a lot of love from Hasbro lately. For a uh, fan-created character, we've gotten a lot of toys for that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, this one actually looks pretty good. When you come to the back of the package, you got other figures that are currently available in this wave. And then you got uh, Scorchfire in the head mode as well as robot mode. I don't know necessarily if Scorchfire is uh, a female, actually. I mean, we know that Windblade is, but I'm not sure about Scorchfire because that's a completely new thing. Then you got uh, images of Windblade in her robot as well as her jet mode. And it says, with the Decepticons rising, the Autobots power up with Titan Master partners to stop them. Scorchfire turns the sword of Windblade into a fiery bringer of Decepticon Doom. So, um, yeah, still don't know if Scorchfire is a girl or not. I guess it doesn't really, it, I mean, obviously it doesn't matter. It's just kind of interesting, but uh, for the packaging, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get her out here and see how cool she actually is. Alright guys, so here we have Windblade opened up and out of her packaging. And much like all the Titans Return figures, we do get a nice collector card. You can see you get that full image of her right there in the front. You got the name Titans Return on the back of the card. You have her strength, speed, intelligence, and fire blast, and how her power kind of ranks, and then how it extends with Scorch Fire. Nothing really that we don't get normally. But here she is, and one thing that's actually fairly cool about her is obviously she's the new mold in this wave. And there's a lot that I really do like about her, uh, the, but to be totally honest, I don't know if she's my favorite representation of Windblade. I think the biggest thing that puts me off, uh, honestly, is probably the size of the figure. Now, looking at her uh, accessories first, uh, she does come with her little sword bitch. You can see that they can tab underneath there. They can also come together right here at this point, and then you sandwich them all together like so and then you, you got a little little writing thing right here for scorch fire which okay you can also i guess have her hold it and it's like this big sword but you got two handles right here it, it looks a little bit better if you just utilize this as two separate swords but really nice you got the kind of yellow lucent plastic right there with some nice silver paint overall fairly decent looking but you, you know i mean nothing overly spectacular uh figure wise though like i was saying a little bit bigger uh, now bringing in my san diego comic-con one uh, like i said they've done i want to say like three different ones uh this one is i believe the one that they used for uh, rid now this was i think the second one they did another one that was probably a little bit bigger but you can see just how big this is now this is a deluxe figure this is also a deluxe figure but there is a huge size difference between these two and i, I don't i don't know because windblade is a female character th this may sound really bad i i kind of like her being a little bit smaller i just like her being a smaller more agile kind of character and i think that this toy here does a much better job now obviously this is the paint job that you know she had for the uh, san diego comic-con one that kind of matches with fort max and while i do think this one is a little bit too big for my liking it still is not to say that this is a bad figure i think it is really very nice i am quite happy with it still and uh, now taking a look at scorch fire you can see you got a little cockpit section here that opens up from the front and um, nothing overly spectacular you, you got uh, a black Black figure with some white paint on the head nothing really different than what we've gotten before coming in to take a little bit of closer look you can see some decent sculpting and everything but you just got the blob of white paint there for the face and then to transform scorch fire scorch fire into wind blades head boom there it is and that's actually a really nice head sculpt nice paint detail nice sculpting i mean they really nail it on all, all on all aspects uh when you come to the side though you do have the problem with a lot of these titans return figures is that uh, the head may look good from there but then you turn it sideways and like oh that's a huge head i mean all of them have it it's just again uh, because of the petite nature i guess that i like windblade to kind of represent a big giant head like that i think is a little bit jarring just looks off rest of the figure is really nice you got this little skid plate right here you flip her toward the bottom and i mean 
it, it, it is pretty much uh, what we've gotten with a lot of other you know wind blade figures like arms along the side the legs kind of fold up wings are on the side the head's kind of hidden i mean well obviously the head's kind of hidden because it completely comes off but uh, it's still a nice looking jet mode don't get me wrong just really large now to transformer really very simple uh, the kind of mechanics are very similar to a lot of other wind blade figures we're just going to move this off to the back like so you can kind of angle these this piece right here you got a little tab section right here on the back of her kind of forearm that tabs in right there so just kind of lift that away and then the shoulders actually shift upward just like so kind of rotate those around going to the front then you come around here to the legs oh well, I guess you could have did this before come to the legs this just rotates around like so and then kind of spread that apart and then collapse that entire section fold the feet just like that kind of get her standing there very heavy duty ratchet joints right there i'll talk about that here in the actual articulation section but the ratchet joints on her are really quite massive uh, so bring that down get her to stand then obviously transforming scorch fire taking the little headpiece and lining that up boom and there you have windblade in her robot mode and really Despite the fact that I think that the figure is a little bit too big, it's still a really nice looking figure. As you can see, the swords are a little bit large, but still look really cool. I, I love the fact that they kind of carried over that whole, you know, sword kind of wielding aspect of Windblade. I think that's absolutely terrific. But overall, a, a good looking figure nonetheless. Very simple in, in its transformation and stuff, but it still looks good. One thing that I think is weird though is coming in here to look at the Autobot logo, uh, kind of hopefully a little focus. It's kind of like got this weird shape. You can see like where it like indents and the paint actually goes down along that indent. You can see it's, you know, the Autobot logo and everything. I, I just think that uh, it's kind of weird how the paint goes down inside that little indent. It's strange to me, I guess, but in general, uh, like I said, really cool looking figure. Uh, proportions, though, I'm still a little bit eh about. I, I, I mean, I think that, I guess maybe as a warrior, they're going for a little bit more of a kind of bulky kind of look for, which is fine. I just, like I said, I think that the previous one just looks a little bit better. Bring that one in, you can see a lot more streamlined, a lot more sleek. I guess you could kind of say, a lot more feminine looking. You kind of notice that, especially here in the hip area, where they're very kind of large, spread out hips, larger thighs. Again, if they're going for more of a, you know, warrior kind of Amazonian look, this is absolutely perfect. I just, I, I really do prefer this one in terms of the uh, overall proportions, I guess. And because why not, here she is next to Trigger Happy, and you can see she, she does look a little bit smaller than, I guess, Trigger Happy, but still pretty big nonetheless. Especially again, I guess I could have uh, done this, especially when you take into consideration that uh, Windblade normally is a little bit, no, well, a little bit drunk, but <laughs> a little bit smaller. I just, I don't know. I, I just think that that works a little bit better. Still, I mean, really nice paint detail and everything. And as you can see with the head, gorgeous looking head sculpt. The figure itself, as I said, is a really nice looking figure, but it does have a very simple kind of feel to it, especially the transformation. Now for her articulation, now the head is on a bit of a ball joint. You get a little bit better of a range of motion because of a Scorch Fire's kind of ball joint. And there's no sort of uh, restrictions around here. So you get a nice range of motion there. Uh, the shoulders here are on very tight ball joints so you get a pretty good range of motion going with that uh, the upper bicep does have a nice kind of swivel you got a nice hinge here at uh, the elbow uh, nothing at the waist that's all locked in there but then the hips have the are these just universal joints? well yeah you got a uh, joint moving forward and back you actually have a bit of a ratchet joint moving in and out which uh, does create some uh, kind of interesting poses because it's like here's one there's the other one uh, so you're kind of on, on one ratchet joint getting a, a big spread like that so bringing that in i mean it's like that on the standard kind of i guess range of motion but you can kind of squeeze it out a little bit to get a little bit better of a kind of wide, wide leg spread uh, it does rotate here at the upper part of the thigh bends here at a huge joint for the knee itself and then i guess you could kind of say that she's got some 
toe articulation. Um, so overall, very nicely articulated. Uh, the only thing really lacking would probably be a waist joint. Oh, one other thing uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, she does have weapon storage here in her robot mode. You come around here to the back, you got these little tabs right here. Kind of line these up. Right there, you got the little, or you got the little holes, and then you got a little tab right there. So you can put that there and bring that up and get, get in there. What? There we go. And you can kind of keep those angled out like that. So you do have some uh, weapon storage here. And then she does get back heavy. And one thing that I've noticed is that you kind of have to keep the legs bent like that in order to get her to kind of balance, you know, some of that weight on her back. But it, it looks okay. Now again, transformation back into her jet mode is really very simple. First, we're going to remove these. We're gonna pull off scorch fire, set that off to the side. You can then come around here, take this, slide that forward, fold that out. That'll push down and lock into place. Oh, I also forgot to mention that these do rotate and you got nice detailing here on uh, both sides of them, which looks really good. Kind of keep that out of the way, fold that down, come around here. You want to then hinge these or fold these bits back and then hinge these around. And you can kind of see, oh, first pull this entire section down until it snaps. And then as you rotate this around, this little fin right here is going to slot in right there. And then you got a little kind of tabbing mechanism right there that's going to tab underneath there. So you just bring that, line that up, push that into place just like so. Really very simple. So again, fold at the knee, fit that little fin through the gap there at the bottom, tab the bottom of the foot into that area right there, come around here to these arms. You want to then hinge them down and then rotate them. And then you can see you got a little hole or rectangle right there. And then you got a little tab right there. You just line that up and keep that shifted down and then plug that in right there so do that on this side as well rotate that around and tab that into place just like so and then you can play with these and kind of angle these however you want but when you're done there you have wind blade back in her jet mode overall though a cool figure i just think as a female character it's a little bit big and honestly I do kind of wish that they did a little bit something more involved with the transformation. I know that a lot of figures recently have been kind of simplified, but this feels a little bit too simple, especially with the Titans Return stuff. They've been doing a lot of really cool things with their engineering, and this one just kind of falls flat, if you ask me. It's a good toy, but I think that the previous versions of Windblade are better. And while I still like this toy, I, I don't really think that there's a need to run out, get her, and replace the other ones that you might have in your collection. It just doesn't do it enough for me to replace that old one. But hey, all that being said, it's still a good toy, and if you'd like to add it to your collection, she is hitting various retail locations right now. So if you're looking for her, good luck and happy hunting. Or as always, there's places like Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on her, as well as the rest of the wide range of Transformers Titans Return figures. And while you're checking out links in the video description, check out information on how you can get your own Optibotomous hat. I'm currently taking pre-orders for these and looking to get at least 50 of them to keep the price at $30. But as a bonus for the people that order within the first 50, you're going to only have to pay $20. But as I said, information on how to pre-order it will be down in the video description. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. It's free and you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you already subscribed, do me a real quick favor and click on that little bell right below this video. And double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, till all are one. You're a